Hey, welcome to The Conversation. You're with Andy Mason, and this is Authentic Conversations Around the Messy Intersection of Faith, Family, and Business. If you want to find out more, check out heaveninbusiness.com. This episode, I want to give you a summary of the most recent strategic retreat we did in Pennsylvania. Now, we've been doing these for about 10 years, based in Redding, California, and this is the first time we've done one on the East Coast, now that we're done here. and not only that, but we switched it up and we did it as a strategic retreat, not just an executive retreat. You say, what's the difference? Well, historically, it's been a lot more focused on uh, personal ministry, unplugging you, uh, counseling, uh, masterminds. We've, a lot of those components we still had, but this time it was more experiential. We took people into some different environments and actually wanted to sort of see and learn and try new things. And here's what happened, what we learned, and what I'm doing as a result. Now, to be candid, there was so much going on. It, it was kind of overwhelming because there was so much. So we're still processing and unpacking what happened ourselves, and we had to debrief with the guests. There were about 20 guests from across the country, and what I'm gonna do is give you kind of an outline of what those three days looked like, uh, what some of the most significant take-homes were for me, and then what I'm doing different as a result. And for you, it's gonna encourage you, it's gonna inspire you, and more than likely, it's gonna make you say, man, I wanna be at the next one. Hey, if you can't come to one of these, don't hesitate, jump on to heavenandbusiness.com backslash events, and check out the events that we're doing where you are. There's a bunch of different workshops, which you're talking about 50 or so people, more interactive, more applying a partnership with God at work. How do I do that? How do I apply it? A conference we do once a year. We've pegged that in for the end of February next year in, in Atlanta at the Bethel Atlanta venue. And then we do these retreats a couple of times a year. Check that out, heavenandbusiness.com backslash events. But this strategic retreat, what did we do and what did it look like and what did we learn? Well, the first day we take these 20 guests and we took them to sight and sound theaters. Now, if you've never been there, as in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, they've been around for over 20 years, perhaps even 30. These guys is not just a Christian Bible show theater alternative to Broadway. These guys are world class. They are doing 11 shows a week, 40 weeks a year, with a couple of thousand people at every single show. Now, that should tell you something, but you literally drive onto this property and you are stunned with the level of excellence. It is huge, it was excellent, it is outstanding, and they bring Bible stories to life. We were seeing the show Moses because it aligns up with a strategic component of shifting culture, and here's what we did. We got to meet them, meet with the CEO, some of the key team. We go behind the scenes and see where they house their live animals that are part of the show. Uh, we see that the technology, the show that's being built for next year, which is going to be Daniel. Uh, we see how they make these, the detail that goes into it, the attention, the excellence. It is stunning. Stunning. And then we sit through the show itself and we get rocked by that. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. And then we went and had lunch with their executive team at the story writing barn, the story barn, where they actually meet off campus, off site, just down the road. And that's where they plan, prepare and strategize of what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. We got to learn about their presence based leadership model, how they make decisions. Stunned absolutely stunned. And if you are near Lancaster, Pennsylvania, if you're near Branson, Missouri, they've got two venues, but check it out. Sight and Sound Theatre, absolutely stunning. I'll tell you more about that. Then we take these 20 people and we go to a local business friend of ours. We had a catered dinner there, kind of unpacked and just connect relationally. So day one, I'm plugging in an experience that just blew our minds. That would have been enough by itself but then day two, we parked at Life Center in Harrisburg with our friends Chandy Thomas, Chandy and Sarah Thomas. And the first session we did there was these interweaving stories throughout the last couple of hundred years 
where you've got Count Zinzendorf, a first kind of mission-driven organization from Europe, sending out missionaries all over the world. We've got the Moravians. We've got the, uh, the stories of William Penn, who founded Pennsylvania, the first person that didn't just take land, but actually set up a covenant with the First Nations, First Nation people of this nation in the area of what we now call Pennsylvania, formed a covenant and actually purchased the land at a fair price and a relational connection. Now, you and I know that that didn't continue. It was taken advantage of. It was abused and covenant broken, not by the First Nations, but by this colonial settlers you and I. Phenomenal story and this holy experiment, the seed of a nation. So William Penn, William Tennant, who came out from Scotland, started the Log College also in Pennsylvania that ended up becoming a revival hub that sparked the thinking that led to the revolution phenomenal stories interweaving and then the story of William Wilberforce if you haven't heard of him abolition of slavery uh, 1633 17 like just throughout history it's crazy these interweaving stories that are in the soil of the very land that we're parked in now if you didn't know the log college that derogatory term for a bible school that was training pastors and preachers and governors and leaders and politicians and every realm of society that actually ended up becoming a familiar name you might have heard of princeton university birth and revival totally humanistic and liberal right now but what if the seed of this nation the seeds that were planted got rebirthed again i'm getting off track i was telling you these interweaving stories and then we heard from john seal his book network power the science of making a difference where he unpacks these intentional small numbers of highly resourced people that shifted culture and he unpacks the stories of william wilberforce you heard that name again, of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, started by a couple of people. How did that go on to have such a significant impact? And the LGBT movement started by a handful of highly intentional, highly resourced people that has shifted culture, whether you like it or not. It has happened and we could learn from what they have done. A highly committed small number at what they call a dense network of people can shift and change culture it's science you can see it you can read about it we unpack that then with our heads like mind blowing we went into the life center's got this prayer room so we like we just need to lay out 20 people with by the way we had lou engel and bob perry bob perry of workplace peer prayer lou engel the send the call you may have heard those things in that environment in a small environment and then praying together it's it's impossible for something not to really change and then if that wasn't enough we then had our friends global awakening that's randy clark's uh, ministry and there's a school of ministry our friends there brought over a team of their students and literally for over an hour and a half we were doing prophetic booths sit down in front of these guests and for five minutes they'd prophesy this is what we hear the lord saying then they'd get up and move another two would sit down for an hour and a half you just your mind is bl just blown with what god says he knows he sees he understands he is with you now those were the first two days the third day we called an audible we're like we gotta understand this this seed of a nation this awakening of the soil that's happening in pennsylvania there's this interweaving stories. We went down to the Capitol building in Harrisburg. That's the capital of Pennsylvania. And in the Senate chamber and the House chamber and the governor's office is literally painted into the walls the story of William Penn as a young man having an encounter with God prophetic words they live by getting rejected by his father having the king of england owing them money rather than paying money he says look give me land in this new land the king says well you're going to need an army william penn says let's see what love will do powerful story and it's right there painted around the governor's wall like literally every part of it with the scriptures with the prophetic words and then you go into the the, the senate chamber the house chamber 
And around the walls are literally these prophetic paintings of what seeds went into this nation. We thought it was going to be, a, I'm thinking, 15 minutes because we need got these other things we need to do. And it just, that took over the whole morning. Stunning and well worth actually having a look at it and looking into some of the history that's woven into not only the history, but the prophetic words of what God has spoken over this nation. Now, if you're not American, uh, like I was, uh, this is my adopted country. I'm from New Zealand. It doesn't matter what country you are from. There is a purpose and a plan that God has. And if you will take the time to mind that, to listen to the people that have stewarded that history with God, then you will be astounded and to pray, God, awaken the soil, awaken the seed. We then came back and we debriefed a little bit. And then we went into what we call mastermind sessions, where small groups actually would actually form around different guests to say, what are you going to do next? And how could you unpack what you've learned, how you could apply that to your life? Well, it was a stunning three days, mind-blowing. There were a couple of things that were just just these key take-home messages for me. And then I'm going to tell you what I'm doing different as a result. So here's some of the things. Uh, and these aren't necessarily in order, but I've written these down. And actually, you can see these in the show notes below this episode or onto the heavenandbusiness.com backslash blog. You can actually read these and highlight. But here's just some of them. This kind of came up again and again and again. You are a part of a story that is way bigger than you. It's way bigger than you. I mean, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works that he prepared in advance that we would work or we would walk in. You're a part of a story that is way bigger than you. And really, really important, you are not the lead role. Now, I'm not either. The point is, Jesus is. And the quicker that you and I work out that we're not the lead role here and we take a supporting role, how can I serve? How can I obey? How I can follow the leader in this context? The easier it will be. It's not going to be easy, but it's easier when we follow him. Uh, you will never fully understand. Like there is something about being human. There's so much going on. There's so much uh, historically, prophetically, the choices of people all around us, good and bad, that affect us, you're never fully going to understand. That's why trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on what you think you know. You've got to give up what you think you know in order to trust Him. But if you will give up the right to understand, don't try and control it, you'll find that it's so much easier when we learn to trust Him. I don't trust my ability to hold on to God. I trust in his ability to hold on to me. That shifts everything. If you look at the book of Exodus, now that's a bunch of people, 400 years of slavery. They have to be told, don't have sex with your mother. Don't have sex with animals. Like you read it. It's in the book. Like that just tells you the level of depravity they got to. And they turn their backs constantly stubborn and stiff necked. The story is not about Israel. The story is about God. If you read in Exodus 34, Yahweh, the Lord, slow to anger, abounding in mercy and unfailing love. When we realize it's about him and his nature and his character and his ways and his word, it's like, oh, like... It's the selfishness. In the last days, people will be lovers of themselves. It's not about you. It's about him and his name and his nature and his word, his ways, and the fact that you get to walk out this relationship with him. It is the greatest privilege of humanity. And most of us are running around like four-year-olds. I do it. I, I do it. I want to do it. It's like, dude, it, really? You want to do that? So some of these things, you're, you're a part of a bigger story. It's way bigger than you. Uh, you're not the lead role. Jesus is. The quicker you yield your perceived control, because you don't really have control anyway, the easier it is. You'll never fully understand. Trust is the key. Uh, this Chandy Thomas, this helped us so much. Don't try and connect the dots. Collect them. 
and then trust God to sort them, sift them, shuffle them. He is the good shepherd. He can really guide you extremely well if you will trust him. A handful of highly committed and resourced individuals with a clear focus can literally change society. And history would tell us it's actually the only thing that ever has. It is not about the masses, the crowds. It's about this dense network of highly committed, highly focused, highly resourced people. And they will achieve significant things when they do that together. Look through history. You'll see that. So if we truly trust God and believe his word, we will take more risk. I love what my wife says. What if we truly believe the Bible? Well, most of us would say, I would take more risk. and I would be more patient because I trust that he's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He's got my past, my present, my future. God is in my future. I stay close to him and I'm going to get there as well. So I'll be more patient in the process. What's the result of that? More joy, more being present in the midst of this. In the story of Moses, we heard that a Pharaoh calls him the God of what? Who's your God? Who is this God? Moses says, well, He's the I am. And Pharaoh laughs at him and says, what? Why would I listen to the God of slaves? And I was like, that struck me, the God of slaves. But when Moses goes to the Israelites who are just slave mentality, they've lost all hope. They've got no idea that this is about to be their deliverance moment. They reject him initially. Who are you to lead us? Why? Because they are stuck in the God who was. The God who did these things in the past, but he's not our God because we've so lost hope 400 years in slavery. But what's the point? God told Moses his name is I am. He's not just the God who was. He's not who's just the God who's in your future. He's the God who's in the now. He is right here, right now with us. And Chandi... Or well, somebody pulls out this passage in Revelation, which somehow in my brain, it was quoted, the God who was and is and who is to come. That's incorrect. It's actually, go and read it. Revelation 1. God says, I am the God who is and who was and who is to come. When I have this revelation that he is the God who is, not just the God who was, Sure, he's been in my past and done amazing things, but that leads me to today. He's the God who is. He's my I am. He is with me today, and whatever's going to go on, it's going to be okay because I am the God who is. He is present, ever present, especially in times of need. That's a God who's with me right now. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting a bit excited just even remembering some of these things. Uh, it's History is important. Prophecy is important. Jesus joins both together, so stay close to him. Uh, it's time to awaken the soil, the holy seed, the heritage and the legacy you stand on and were grafted into. Isaiah, uh, so Psalm 61 says this, you have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You literally were grafted in, Romans 11, you're grafted into the holy seed, this rootstock that Jesus established the promises, the prophetic words, the history with God. That is Israel. You get grafted into that. We've got this heritage. What if you started to remember that and awaken that, realize that you grafted into rootstock that goes deep, that is strong, that's thousands of years of historical Christianity that we're a part of, these founding fathers, these men and women of history that we stand on the shoulders of. But when was the last time you went back and remembered Count Zinzendorf? William Penn, William Wilberforce, William Tennant, Charles Finney, uh, Hannah Moore, all of these wonderful, wonderful men and women of God that we stand on the shoulders of and we get to go further, faster, stronger and longer. And then when you know how loved you are, you never feel insignificant. When you know how loved you are, you never feel insignificant and you never get stuck comparing yourself to someone else. When you know how significant you are because you are fully loved and fully known. Well, there's so much in that that you could just take a week just to unpack some of those thoughts. And then 
those thoughts are great, but a thought by itself is just a vain imagination or idea that makes you feel good. I've got to take that thought and put legs on it. I've got to integrate it into my life. How do I apply this? So here's just a couple things that I'm doing differently and taking that. Now, heads up, I find myself revisiting learning on a daily basis. I've got to go back. I'm continually learning. I'm continually growing. And the key points are coming up in multiple conversations in many ways the learning further confirmed the direction that we're already heading. So that's really, really encouraging. But it's also, it's like it's raised the volume or the significance or the, the intensity. I don't feel it intense, but the this, this sense of focus on what we're doing and why we're doing it and saying, this is really, really important. Don't change the subject. So here's a couple of things. One, be more patient in the journey. Increase my intentional joy activities. When I read the stories and hear this history and looking at 400 years of slavery and then the deliverer comes and it was prophesied of these 40 years of Moses in the wilderness and then 40 years leading the Israelites through the wilderness, every part of it is significant. What if I relaxed a little and trusted God's timing and what he's doing in me? He's the good shepherd. That's that when I know the history and the promises and the prophetic words interwoven around Jesus, I stay close to him. I trust that he is leading me better than I know. It means that I can have a lot more fun in the journey. Well, what does that look like? Well, I just was listening to a podcast by Jordan Peterson, and he talked about a couple of key things. Number one is your mental capacity is directly tied to your physical fitness as in doing physical exercise raises raises your mental cognitive ability. Most of us are like, oh, I'm too busy for that. No, I trust God and his timing. So actually, I've got plenty of time to go and work out at the gym and go running and training. I'm doing a crazy thing with my 19-year-old son. We've just signed up for a 50K trail run, and I don't want to die. So I'm doing some training to prepare for that. But I'm realizing there is so much fun, you might not think, that's the case, but it's fun for me. I get to explore and venture freedom in the middle of it. It's like, it's this is amazing. It's something that I can do. There's so much joy to be found in the middle, on the way, if I'll be patient and trust God's got my future. Secondly, don't change the subject. Know and stay in your lane or assignment. Celebrate, encourage, and strengthen others in their lane. But don't join in. Just because they've got a great vision, great focus, doesn't mean you've got to join theirs. You're going to be held accountable to did you do what God gave you to do? Or did you just bury your talent in good soil? It's like, am I doing what I'm called to do? Avoid Christian codependence. <laughs> Avoid Christian codependence. That's event-based lifestyle, living to the lowest common, den common denominator. and this phrase, if you're not okay, then I'm not okay. So I say, how low can I go? I just go to the lowest common denominator and serve, 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 serve. When actually God's placed some things in your heart to go, go and make disciples. Be who I've called you to be. So don't change the subject. It's a long-term game. This is not a sprint, but I can actually persevere and persist because I can find joy on the journey. Why do I find joy? Because I trust that he's got my past, my present, my future, because he's not just the God of I was and the God of my future. He's the God of who is. He is with me today. He's with you today. Finally, protect and prioritize key relationships. This story, this book here, I've got a copy of it, Network Power, the science of making a difference. It talks about dense networks, these highly intentional, highly committed people walking together to actually on a single focus. It's not just a spiritual formation group. It's not just a discipleship group. They are walking with a common purpose for a common goal, and they're committed to one another. Really powerful stories that we can learn by. Now, what does that look like? Well, you see it in your Bible. That's the story of the disciples. It's like, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded, and I will be with you until the ends of the earth. What's the point? Don't change the subject. Keep going. 
know and protect your priorities, and prioritize key relationships. Hey, I know that this, I just dropped a whole heap of stuff on you, but that's what we've got Heaven and Business online community. And learning community, there's a whole heap of things where you can actually slow down and go little bit by little bit by little bit. There's a library of content to help you grow with God, grow in your assignment, grow in influencing culture, and then growing, influencing, then engaging the city, the community around you. Jump on to heavenandbusiness.com backslash free trial, or better yet, heavenandbusiness.com backslash events, and join us at an upcoming in-person event. I would love to see you there. Hey, if you've got any questions or comments, don't hesitate to reach out, Andy, at heaveninbusiness.com, and I'll see you again next week.